G'day ice cream lovers, my name is Steve Christensen, the ice cream blog, self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, and uh, also currently the executive director of the National Ice Cream Retailers Association. Uh, hunkering down here at home in our stay at home, uh, stay isolated process here in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, don't usually do a lot of broadcasts from home, but wanted to get some information out to you um, as an ice cream retailer community, but also as a food service community um, as a whole. Um, primarily a lot of our content and video is primarily just kind of targeted at that ice cream and frozen dessert segment. But my experience uh, over 20 years in the industry and also helping open up over 750 retail locations, um, I have some thoughts as to some of the things that we could possibly be doing right now. Uh, particularly if your store is closed by virtue of the fact that you wanted to close it uh, or it was mandated by your state or county that you needed to close. Um, so these are very challenging times and I think that we need to really look at sources for information, credible, reliable information, because there certainly is a lot of my best friends, uncles, niece uh, heard this. Um, and so our goal is to be able to get good information out to you um, and that's where I think your source should be. Certainly the federal, state and your county are great sources of information uh, and I would certainly look at them so far as regulations on whether you can stay open or closed. Keep a good open line of communication with that particular entity uh, that uh, is making the decisions on what your public can and cannot do, your potential and your current customers. Um, but what I wanted to do was put out here just a quick video of the top 10 things that you could be doing right now in order to utilize this time to strengthen your business. I, I believe that we will come out of it the other end. Um, and so our goal is to be able to utilize time now, perhaps for those things that we uh, had that were important but not urgent things to do uh, because of we're always running around working in our business rather than on our business. Um, now we've got some time uh, that we can perhaps utilize it wisely and put some infrastructure in place to make sure that when we are through the end of this COVID-19 challenging times that we've got a good solid infrastructure for growth straight off. Uh, so uh, top 10, but in no particular order. The first one is to make sure that you're very well up to date with the current state of the stimulus packages and loans that are available to you in your area. Now, this is a very fluid situation. Um, the federal government uh, yesterday announced uh, the passing of their uh, relief package, which is great. Um, I know that the National Restaurant Association and many other associations are also petitioning uh, the government, both states and federal, to help out ice cream shop owners and restaurant owners, food service people in general. Um, you may also find that your state and county may have some packages available to you. I know that uh, our premises down the road here at Scoop School is in an incubator center and that incubator center conglomeration offered all of its tenants um, a bridging loan, uh, very little if not any interest. Um, so there are packages out there that you should probably be aware of and the work that needs to go into prepare for it because the federal uh, SBA process uh, again, it's just kind of rolling out right now, but you will need to have your ducks in a row so far as how many employees you have, what was your taxable income, uh, are your tax returns up to date. So you've got a little bit of work to do to be aware of what's available to you and make sure that you can qualify for it. And number two is looking at your food costs. This is a great opportunity now to be able to go through and say, okay, I've always wanted to do a spreadsheet up of exactly what my products cost me. And we talk about this with new business owners all the time. Uh, you really do need to know when you open exactly what a particular product costs you. If you're uh, giving away or selling a uh, turtle sundae, you need to know exactly what that costs you. The cup, the spoon, the napkins, as well as everything that makes up that food product. Um, so um, I've got a spreadsheet that I'm going to put down below here. Um, a link to it. All of the, uh, the spreadsheets and the forms that we use in Scoop School have general use all over the food service industry. Um, and we're going to open up the link uh, for free for everyone to access all of those forms. I think it's really important that everyone has an opportunity to do that. Well, one of those forms is a basically a menu form uh, 
uh, where you can go through and do your food cost calculations. Have a look at your invoices. Really understand what it costs per ounce for hot fudge, topping, cream, your ice cream mix, and start to plug in those numbers into the spreadsheet. Uh, and I think you'll find that um, this will be time well spent, particularly when it starts to kick off again. So um, you should know, as I said, uh, every cost, every item's cost that you put on the menu. Again, now is a great time to talk to suppliers about uh, terms and pricing and so forth. So food cost calculations, very important. Number three, uh, I think you really need to have a look at your employees and do almost what I would call a talent audit. Uh, one of the things that we stress in the food service industry is uh, those two variable costs, your food costs, which we mentioned just a minute ago, and your labor costs. Now, labor costs comes down to really utilizing the best people using their best talents at their particular time. And you may have someone that is great for preparations but just cannot work the counter or cannot, uh, for whatever reason, get them up in front of people, but they're great in prep. So I would do a spreadsheet of all of your employees uh, look at where their talents are, what shifts they work at the best, who they work with the best, maybe who they work or who they shouldn't be working with, and populate a spreadsheet out and do that talent audit. And then have a look at your scheduling software. If you're not using software, I really do think that you should. Uh, and again, what we're going to do with each of these topics is have a video concentrating on them for the next 10 days. So we'll talk more specifically about scheduling software uh, but if you're doing the old Excel spreadsheet and opening up request books, I really think there's a better way for you to do that. Uh, number four, you've got product, uh, you're pretty well prepped for a season or a, a particular time slot here. Why not start to use this product to get and generate a good social media library of images and video? Uh, that's something that we do regularly down here at Scoop School for a lot of different products and promotions that we have. Um, so we actually physically make up products and take photos of them for use across all of the uh, different social media platforms. Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, TikTok we've started to do. Uh, LinkedIn, funnily enough, is one that's not really utilized as much as it could be. So start to make everything you can on your menu. Uh, start to take photographs of them. You may also start to build up a bit of a prop cabinet or a prop library. Uh, if you will, that's something that we've done here is one of our cupboards down there at Scoop School. It's full of props that we kind of position the uh, position the, the products in and take a picture of them. So um, take the time, maybe a morning or an afternoon, make as many products as you can, even the products that you know you're going to be using. So if in your area uh, you have the Strawberry Festival that's coming up in three or four months, um, and you may look at doing a fresh Strawberry Sunday as a limited time offer, Take that image now. Use the time now to build up a library of social media content, uh, both image and uh, video. Very important. Number five, each of us have websites. Each of us have social media accounts. Why don't you spend some time? Again, it might only take an hour or two, but just go through page by page to look at your website and make sure that all that information is current and correct. All of the images that may be outdated could use a refresh. Uh, all of the links that you have to other services that you do are correct. Uh, your contact details are correct. Have a look at your social media accounts, uh, particularly your Yelp uh, account and your uh, review-based marketing accounts. Take some time, maybe a couple of hours, one morning, one afternoon, to go through and make sure that all of that information is accurate, correct, current, uh, and also uh, respond to uh, some of the reviews that you've had. Very important to do. Okay, number six. Um, it kind of comes into play uh, when we spoke a little bit about your food costs, but now's the time for you to start doing some research as to what you can possibly do to reduce your food cost. And what that means is looking at items on your menu uh, or, or elements of a particular item that you can source a little cheaper. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ice cream distributors out there now that are kind of wanting to move product. Um, but you've got some products that really multiple people use in your particular market. For example, an SD12 Solo Sunday Cup. Uh, we use a ton of them when we had our store here in St. Louis. And uh, I could get them from four or five different locations in and around the St. Louis area. Now, my Broadline distributor had them as well. 
but sometimes it makes sense for me to make some phone calls to Garrett Paper and to Midwest Paper and start to get an idea of costing. Um, so take the time now to jump online, uh, Webstaurant, a lot of these online retailers, do a spreadsheet up as well as some of your local guys and just see how much money you can spend, or I should say save, uh, on those items that you can interchange. Now, things like your ice cream mix and your fudge, you know, maybe so, um, so uh, what's the word I'm after, proprietary to your business that you don't want to change them on a whim. But you do have a lot of things currently that you possibly could uh, use or find another supplier for, for exactly the same item or very similar to. Um, so that's a good idea to be able to kind of fine tune and see if you can reduce some of those food costs and paper costs. Uh, number seven, sales data. A lot of people should be doing this at the end of the last ice cream season or just before the current season kicks off, having a look at what sold well and what didn't sell well last season or last year. Now, if you're using a point of sale system, a POS system uh, that tracks all of those uh, multipliers and a lot of those elements, the PLUs, um, you should be able to pull a report of what sold extremely well down to what didn't sell well. Now, it's one of those things whereby I think a lot of people have on their menu boards items and uh, toppings or add-ins, candies and particulates that don't really sell well and they just kind of sit there and move very slowly. And that menu board is extremely valuable real estate. So you need to kind of pull all of that data from your uh, POS system and get an idea as to what sells well and what doesn't. And you may have to take a product off your menu, maybe put it on limited time offer status or a seasonal offer status, uh, and then um, put something else in there that you think might do very well. Um, so have a look at that. Got to look at the sales data, figure out what sells, what doesn't, move things around a little bit so you've always got things on your menu that are selling well. Uh, number eight, uh, developing a marketing calendar. So there are a lot of websites that actually go through this process of figuring out what days, uh, months, weeks have uh, national celebrations, international celebrations. I know you're always getting the emails, it's National Pecan Day or it's National uh, uh, Apple Pie Month. Um, now, there are a few websites that you can research. National Calendar or uh, National Calendar Day is one of them. Um, but get a spreadsheet together and start to populate a marketing calendar. Uh, again, take a couple of hours to do this, a morning or an afternoon, and start to slot in now some of the things that you'll need to put in place for when St. Patrick's Day comes around or when Labor Day comes around, when Memorial Day comes around. Uh, and all of those other little celebrations, international, national, regional, local, uh, and start to populate some of the things that you'd like to do for that. It's always a, a pain in the backside when an event comes up and you're not prepared and you're scrambling to put together a particular flavor of ice cream or a particular uh, menu item. So start on that a little bit early. You have a little bit of time uh, and see if you can populate that so you go ahead of the curve uh, when the season comes back and when we're all up and running again. Number nine, employee manuals. Uh, you should have an employee manual. It's the Bible to your business. If you don't have an employee manual, you really need to look at getting one. Now, uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time in the employee uh, manual video uh, and send you a copy of the one that we use. I think it's very, very good. Um, and you can access it in Word format. Uh, but looking at your employee manual, make sure it is current with state and county legislation. A lot of the content that you can put in your employee manual really should be taken straight from the state or the county, state labor department, county health department. Um, you really should just primarily cut and paste how to wash your hands. The recommendation from the state health department or the county health department straight into your uh, employee manual. Same thing with your standard operating procedures or your SOPs. If you don't have a system in place or a description, should have turned that off, uh, or a description, I'm gonna uh, silence it. Um, let's, let's uh, we could edit this out, but I don't think I'm going to. Just shows you the dramas of working from home office. Um, you should have a description of every process that you have. So you should have an SOP or a standing operating procedure for your open procedure, your closed procedure, your shift change procedure, what needs to be done at the end of the shift, what needs to be done at the beginning of the shift, 
how to put together and load a hot fudge machine, uh, how to uh, go through the process of giving a customer a refund. There literally can be anywhere between 10 and 50 uh, SOPs that you should be working at so that when someone needs that information or someone can't get a hold of you and you're the one with all of the knowledge, they simply just go to the SOP book, look at the customer service section, and here's an explanation point by point on how to deal with the complaining customer or how to do a refund. Uh, what do you do when uh, a delivery comes and the boxes are broken? All those kind of things. So have a look at your employee manual, have a look at your standard operating procedures. If you don't have them, you really should put some into place. If you do have them, make sure they're current. And number 10, um, hopefully this has been done anyway, and I'm not suggesting that you get into your equipment where you shouldn't be getting, but you really should be doing preventative maintenance on your equipment as much as you can as a store operator. Uh, things like making sure the condenser coils are clean, uh, using a, a brush and then a vacuum to make sure that those coils are, are clean. Getting up on the roof of your business, make sure that your air conditioning ducts uh, similarly are clean and they don't have leaves on them. All of these things that, uh, again, help in the process of having your machines run a little bit better. Uh, also, uh, perhaps uh, be ready and more efficient when the season starts. Now, talk to your local equipment guy, your local HVAC or your uh, refrigeration technicians the people who uh, service your ice cream equipment. Get some ideas from them as to what you can do in the store to help make sure that the equipment is running well. Uh, you may want to invest in a PM visit, a preventative maintenance visit from your equipment provider. Um, but now's the time to do that. Now, hopefully before the season comes up, you've already done that. Uh, but again, things are crazy and it might be good to do that. So there you go. There are uh, uh, my top 10 things that you could be doing right now. Uh, in this harrowing time, if you've got a little time and you want to remain active, if you have employees that you want to keep on and you want to keep them busy, uh, there are 10 things that I think you can do. Now, over the next 10 videos, I'm going to break them down a little bit more intricately, uh, looking at examples online and using spreadsheets and so forth. So I guess this is an introductory video. If you don't watch any of the other ones coming up, that's fine, but uh, concentrate on those 10 things to do. So anyway, yes, harrowing times. Now at the end of most of our Scoop School videos, we send you to scoopschool.com. This one, I'm changing tack a little bit. We are uploading daily information to the National Ice Cream Retailers Association's website. So uh, I'll put a link down here below, but nicra.org slash COVID-19, uh, or just go to nicra.org and click on the COVID-19 tab. Every day we get information here uh, at the office that we load up that is extremely valuable for not only the ice cream industry but for restaurants all around the country. So um, again, uh, next 10 videos are going to look specifically at those 10 products or those 10 elements. Um, stay safe out there. Keep on scooping. We'll see you in the next video.